androids, aliens, and wizards. That's not a thing. That, that's definitely a thing. No, it's not. So every time we fight, we fight one of the three. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 things you missed in the Falcon and the Winter Soldier Episode 2. I'm Battlestar, John Spiner. It's the Power Brokers, man. Everybody grab what you can. It's always that last line. For this list, we're looking at the Easter eggs, comic book references, and MCU callbacks you might have missed in this episode of the Disney Plus series. Since we'll be talking about every detail, beware of big spoilers flying your way. Which of these flew under your radar? Let us know in the comments below. Number 10. Carly's already doing better than her comic counterpart. So what do you got? Well, the leader's name's Carly Morgenthau. When fans found out a character named Carly Morgenthau would appear on the show, they suspected she was meant to be a new take on Carl Morgenthau, the original Flag Smasher. The show played with this connection by the way they introduced her character. When Flag Smasher first appeared in Captain America issue number 312, he fought the titular hero. But the villain ultimately loses to the Star-Spangled Man. Flag Smasher leader Carly also fights a version of Cap only a few minutes after she's introduced. But unlike her comic counterpart, she walks away from this battle victorious. Hello, girl, kick your ass! Hi! Carly's triumph is both a nice twist on the original's origins and confirmation that she is a huge threat. We got a glimpse of how things could be. I need to know that you're all committed. Because after tomorrow, there's no going back. Number 9. Captain America Carries a Gun Again During the fight with the Flag Smashers, John Walker uses a handgun to save his friend Lamar. John, we ran his choice of weapon gave us a great callback to the first Captain America movie. While Steve used his shield heavily in that movie, he was firing his own pistol in several key scenes. After he was unfrozen, he largely stopped using firearms in battle. A shield and the occasional hammer seem to be his primary weapons of choice. I knew it. Since we don't think Walker is worthy of Mjolnir quite yet, we think he'll keep his firearm a little while longer. After all, carrying the pistol at the start of your career is sort of an unofficial Captain America tradition. Did you know Steve Rogers? Well, I was two years out of West Point when Steve came back on the scene. I followed his career very closely as an Avenger. Number 8. We understood that grenade reference. To say Bucky isn't happy with Walker being the new Captain America would be an understatement. Shortly after they meet, the former Winter Soldier asks the new Captain America a very pointed question about grenades. Just because you carry that shield, it doesn't mean you're Captain America. Look, I've done the work, okay? You ever jump on top of a grenade? Bucky's question is another throwback to the first movie. Before Steve gained his abilities, he risked his life to save his fellow soldiers by throwing his body on top of a grenade. Grenade! Get away! Get back! Fortunately, it was just a dummy grenade. But its false nature did not take away from how heroic and selfless Steve proved he was by jumping on top of it to save lives. Although Walker also has stories about grenades, they just don't sound as impressive as Steve's encounter. Actually, I have four times. It's a thing I do with my helmet. It's a reinforced helmet. It's a long story. Number 7. Bucky tries to imitate Steve's plane jumps. Where's the chute? We're 200 feet. It's too low for a chute. I don't need it anyway. Steve Rogers has a bad habit of jumping out of planes when it isn't totally safe to do so. In the first film, he jumped out of a plane in a ridiculously dangerous area. During Captain America the Winter Soldier, he doesn't even bother with a parachute when he exits his aircraft. Too busy! Was he wearing a parachute? No. No, he wasn't. We think Bucky heard these stories and wanted to imitate his old friend. In the episode's funniest scene, Barnes decides to jump from a plane with no chute. But unlike Captain America, he doesn't exactly land gracefully. We hope Bucky doesn't take his crash landing too hard. Not everyone can recklessly jump from a plane like Steve. I have all of that on camera, you know that, right? Number 6. Power Broker May Empower Another Hero Damn it, we gotta move out now. They found us. How much time do we have? None. It's the Power Brokers, man. Everybody grab what you can. After just appearing as a name in the credits, the Power Broker made a much bigger splash in the second episode by sending armed men after Carly. Since she got away, he may resort to another strategy to get back at her. We've previously mentioned that the Power Broker once gave Walker super abilities in the comics. But the villain didn't stop there. 
The power broker also helped Lamar Hoskins, aka Battlestar, become super strong. In their current state, Hoskins and Walker could barely touch the Flag Smashers who took the Super Soldier Serum. How in the hell, after 80 years, are there eight Super Soldiers running loose? That didn't go as planned, huh? And the power broker wants to see Carly fall. Maybe he's willing to give powers to Hoskins and Walker if they agree to take down Carly. Where's she now, Walker? Do you know? No, we don't know, Bucky. But it's only a matter of time before we find out. Things are really intense for you, aren't they, Walker? Number five, a new take on a familiar tune. Time to go to work. At the start of the second episode, Walker makes a big entrance while the Captain America drum corps plays an energetic song. The credits confirm they're playing The Star Spangled Man. This song first appeared in the MCU during, you guessed it, Captain America's first movie. We mainly heard the tune when Steve performed in front of various audiences. The show's version is bigger, more bombastic, and feels more modern. It's a great metaphor for the passing of the Captain America mantle. Just like the drum corps had a different take on a familiar song, Walker will be a different take on the hero we know and love. Hopefully, we'll grow to like him as much as we dig this new version of Star Spangled Man. Star Spangled Man with a plan and all that. It's always been in the job description. Number four, the history behind the White Wolf moniker. Little time in Wakanda and you come out White Panther. It's actually White Wolf. We heard Bucky's newest nickname for the first time during Infinity War. This one may be tired of war, but the White Wolf has rested long enough. But before he was called the White Wolf, that name belonged to a very different person. In the comics, a white man named Hunter survived a plane crash near Wakanda. The king took pity and treated Hunter like a son, but the rest of the citizens saw him as an outcast. After growing more bitter and brutal, Hunter was nicknamed the White Wolf and eventually attacked the Black Panther. Bucky was treated with kindness and respect in Wakanda. So, instead of the White Wolf title being a bad omen, we think it's a nickname he wears with pride as a sign of his love for the nation. I had a little calm in Wakanda. And other than that, I just went from one fight to another. Number three, the serious origins of the name Battlestar. I'm a husky. I see a guy hanging out of a helicopter in tactical gear. I need a lot more than Lamar Hoskins. I'm Battlestar, John Spiker. Battlestar? It may have sounded a little ridiculous when Hoskins introduced himself as Battlestar, but there's an extremely good reason why he goes by that name. When Walker became Captain America in the comics, he chose Hoskins to be his right-hand man. But there was a catch. Although Cap's comic sidekick was previously called Bucky, that name has a history of being an extremely offensive term that was used to describe African Americans. So Hoskins eventually agrees to fight alongside the new Cap as Battlestar. Is it a good superhero name, or does it make him sound like a Star Wars character? Mm -hmm. This is General Lando Calrissian. We know who he is, 3 pm It is an honor, General. That's for you to decide. But no matter how you feel about Battlestar, it is definitely a thousand times better than using a name with troubling implications. John Walker, Captain America, Lamar Hoskins. Looks like you guys can use some help. Number two, how Isaiah's imprisonment may relate to Sam's life. Sam, this is Isaiah. He was a hero. One of the ones that Hydra fear the most, like Steve. Isaiah Bradley reveals many heartbreaking truths during his first appearance. One of the most tragic things he mentions is that he was sent to jail for 30 years after serving his country. In the comics, Bradley took a Captain America suit and shield to help him complete his final mission. When he returned home, he was given a life sentence for stealing the costume and ended up in solitary confinement for 17 years. Bradley's comic book story parallels Sam's speech to Bucky about the consequences of stealing Cap's shield. Do you remember what happened the last time we stole it? Maybe. I'll help you in case you forgot. Sharon was branded enemy of the state and Steve and I were on the run for two years. The comic version of Bradley and Sam were both just trying to help people. But in the end, they were both punished by the nation they had given so much to protect. Oh God, I am so sorry, Mr. Wilson. I, I didn't recognize you without the cockles. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, 
a young Avenger. You must not hear what I just said. You mean getting in this house? Y'all can leave now. The young man who answers the door at the Bradley residence is listed on IMDb as Eli Bradley. If that Eli is short for Elijah, then we may have met another future hero. There is a comic storyline where Elijah takes up the mantle of Patriot and fights with the Young Avengers. Although he initially takes a mutant hormone to get stronger and faster, he gains permanent super soldier abilities after getting a blood transfusion from Isaiah. We've already met other potential Young Avengers in the MCU, like Cassie Lang, Billy, and Tommy. Listen, boys, your mother and I never really prepared you for this. But you were born for it. And traditional members like Kate Bishop's Hawkeye will debut soon. If Eli Bradley follows in the footsteps of his comic book counterpart, he might become one of the founding members of the team. All right, we're here. Nice kid. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.